Lionel wants to come bring the word. Let's give it up for Brother Lionel. I love this guy with all my heart. This guy loves the Lord. I've seen so much fire in him. He's growing in things of God. I'm proud of you, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Come on. We got to give some guys some praise on that. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, no, no. I know. I don't hear anybody that's loving God right now. I need some praise tonight. There we go. There we go. There we go. And I'm going to tell y'all, I come from a church where we get loud. Yeah, obviously, I noticed that we like to run from last Sunday. <laughs> and we like to be in service for about three hours. So y'all get ready. <laughs> no, but uh, man, Andy, uh, man, I, I thank God for Andy. And I thank God for him going first as well. <laughs> Oh uh, man, because he uh, he left me a lot of time. Not just playing, no. Uh, but um, you know, Andy and I, since I've been here, I feel like we've grown closer and closer, and I think it's for a reason. And and then for for Pastor Josh to ask both of us to preach on tonight, I just feel like God is doing something between these brothers right here. And I just I just know God is is doing something in DPC and there's going to be something just flowing through us. Amen. Amen. And uh, I just I just thank God for, for what he's doing. I, uh, you know, I, another reason why I was glad uh, Andy uh, spoke first is because uh, after Pastor Josh, you know, uh, put the oil on us, man, I, I was trying to hold the tears back so much. I don't know if I would have been able to talk after that. And so so I just thank God for that. But. Tonight, we're going to be talking uh, about being comfortable, okay? And, you know, for all of us, there is a place where we are most comfortable. We are comfortable in certain temperatures. Some of us like it real cold. Some of us like it real hot. Amen. We we're talking at lunch today about, thank you, uh, about uh, my wife, Jamie, um, uh, uh freezing me out during the uh, summer months and then during the winter months I'm burning up that's where I lose most of my weight during the winter months <laughs> and so <laughs> you know we we love to have that that certain temperature we are comfortable if we are sitting in a certain seat even at church so much so that we get offended if somebody else is sitting in our seat <laughs> amen we are comfortable when we get around people that look and act like us. There are even things called comfort foods. Amen? Sundays, amen, food. I remember last weekend, uh, Jamie uh, cooked uh, some dinner for us and had it ready for us. So when we got back from church, it was already prepared. And I just remember coming in like, yeah, I'm going to reheat this. I'm about to eat. <laughs> and uh, and it was some baked chicken that was flown down from heaven. <laughs> some sweet potatoes, roasted sweet potatoes that was plucked from the Garden of Eden. And then there was uh, some, um, um, some, what was it, uh, baked beans that came from the land of milk and honey. And I ate that. I, I ate it. I got seconds, got thirds. <laughs> and then after I ate, I wanted to go hang out with Jamie. And so I went into the room and, and I laid down next to her. And before the conversation got started, I was knocked out. <laughs> I fell asleep because I got comfortable. I got full. I got secure. I was laying right next to my wife. And, and I was just that tired. But there are also things that make us very uncomfortable. Amen? Especially when things take us out of our normal circumstances. We don't like mixing with people we don't know. We don't like taking on tasks that we're not or that we're familiar with, unfamiliar with. We don't like things that we can't get our hands around. We can't get our thoughts around. We don't like things that we can't use our five senses. The see, touch, taste, smell, and hear. We get uncomfortable when we start walking in the dark. 
How many of us, when, when, the, when we walk into a room and we don't know where that light switch is, we're rushing for that phone, right? And that, that, light, that, uh, that light on there. Or our, sen our other senses start go going crazy, amen? But because of discomfort, we try our best to stay within our comfort zone. So tonight, I will be speaking about stepping out of comfort. With the emphasis of helping us understand that most of us, our, most of our success begins when we step out of comfort. That could be moving to a new place. Jamie, can I get an amen? <laughs> Trying to network and meet with new people. Eating new foods. Andy, Amy. <laughs> or allowing God just to stretch us past what we're used to. And so what's waiting on the other side of comfort could be that dream job you've been asking for. It could be that husband you've been looking for. It could be that wife you've been looking for. But most importantly, it could be the calling that God has for you. Because we must remember that eye hasn't seen, nor ear hasn't heard, nor has entered the heart of man of what God has for you. I bet tonight I can't even get 50 people to get up and get out of their comfortable seat to give God praise. I can't get 50 people to get up and give God praise. Let's get out of our comfort zone. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you, I come from a yelling church, so I'm going I'm to have some yelling. Uh, <laughs> our verse tonight is going to come from John 15, verses 1 through 8. And it reads, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes. And he prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I in you. Just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch and he withers. They gather him, throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. Second verse that I have is Isaiah, I'm sorry, uh, second reading that I have is Isaiah 42 and 16. It says, I will lead the blind by a way that did not know. I will guide them on paths they did not know. I will turn darkness into light in front of them and rough places into level ground. This is what I will do for them and, will not, and I will not abandon them. Amen. Amen. Father God, tonight I have many loved ones here coming to hear and see me speak. But Father God, let them hear and see you instead. And Lord, Father God, speak through me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. And Lord, I thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, if you know it's important to be part of the vine, say amen. amen. In our text tonight, Jesus is sharing with us, one, that we have to be a part of the vine in order for us to continue to be a part of him. If you are not part of the vine, you are in sin. You're not connected to Jesus Christ. Walking to a place of darkness and you're heading to a place called hell. Now, can I be real? I know I got some people quiet right now. But God wants us to understand today that the blood that ran through Jesus' veins is the same blood that was shed for our sins. Which is now the same blood that washed away our sins, that took my shirt 
to be G uh, Pastor Josh's shirt without spot or blemish. He, he washed it clean with a red blood. Now, I don't know what Tide can do. I don't know what OxyClean can do, but I definitely know that it cannot wash away my stain sin that I had in my life. And I was not even that bad of a person. I wasn't a murderer. I wasn't a abuser. I didn't, I didn't molest a child. But what I had an issue with is having a lying tongue. And now how many people know that that is an abomination to God? Now, a lot of us don't speak on that because some of us still have that same issue. But it's the lying tongue that can get us in trouble. It's the gossiping tongue that gets us in trouble. Now, Jesus also lets us know that we are connected to the vine. We should be bearing fruit. We should be bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When you bear these fruits, you should see things grow around you. It should manifest. It shouldn't just stick in your spirit, but manifest outwardly. You should see a growth in your influence, a growth in happiness, a growth in giving, a growth in financial stability. Because how many know that the Bible teaches us how to use money? Amen? We should see some job promotions. God should definitely see maturity in you by removing yourself out of what you used to do into a new life. We also should reap the benefits of being connected to the way, the vine, Jesus himself. I want you to think about some of the greats that were connected to the vine. You have Moses, who was able to part the Red Sea and lead his people out of Egypt. Elijah did the works of the Lord that he didn't die, but he was called up in a whirlwind into heaven. That same man saw something in a little farmer boy named Elisha. And Elisha received a double anointed, a, a double portion anointing on his life that when he died, his bones was able to resurrect a person that was there. A, now we have to think about, there's also a shepherd boy named David. He was anointed and appointed to be the next king. Amen. And so he was called to do some Uber Eats uh, and deliver some lunch to his brothers that were in the field. But he decided to take a pit stop and take his stone and his sling and kill a nine foot nine inch giant. There's also a man named Jesus who said, remain in me and I in you. He's letting us know that we have the same power to do the miracles that he did while he was here on this earth. Let's get a little reminder. Pastor Josh did that last Sunday. I, it, it stirred me up. Let's get a little reminder of what Jesus did on this earth. He healed the blind. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He showed grace to an adulterer and kept her from being stoned. He fed 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish. He commanded a legion of demons to come out of a man and sent them into Porky Pig and made him jump off the cliff. He told a storm to shut up and calm down. He walked on water. Let's not forget that he was bruised for our iniquities. He took stripes for our healings. He was pierced for our transgressions. I don't think y'all hear me right now or what God did. But after all of that, he carried the very thing that was going to crucify him. A 300 pound wooden cross. A 300 pound wooden cross that he took to the place that was going to take his very last breath. Jesus even showed forgiveness to a thief that was right next to him. And gave him a ticket into heaven. While he was suffering to even gasp for air. That's the type of Jesus. That's the type of God we serve. But the story isn't over. He was then raised from the dead in all power in his hands. That's the type of vine we are connected to. We have that power that was in his hands. That's in his hands. But that's only if we move out of our comfort zone. I love what Andy just said is that 
Jesus will knock, but it takes us doing a little something. Amen. We can't stay in our comfort zone and expect things to change. Einstein said, if you keep doing the same thing and you keep failing, then what are you? Insane. Many of us feel stagnant. Many of us feel like we've hit a plateau. No matter how hard you try to please God, the devil just seems to throw something else your way. And so you get two, three steps, four steps forward. Man, I'm living for God. And then something else comes and it makes you feel like, should I be walking this way? Am I walking the right way? Amen. You know, last weekend, the Holy Spirit was really stirring during uh, church and we had altar time. And um, I remember after well, during the altar time, I had to steal away. I had to get back in the corner and just pray to God myself. And, and I was praying and I shared this with Brother Willie uh, that that God was letting me know that that the person that is praying for others. He had me looking around everybody. And he said, the person that is praying for others, the person that is serving, that's the person that's sitting at my throne of grace. So I'm going to ask you this. Who do you pray for the most? Are you praying for yourself? Or are you praying for others? Are you praying for physical things that will keep you in your current comfort zone? Or are you praying for spiritual things that will help you grow and sustain you? Is God, his kingdom, and his righteousness your number one priority in your life? Because Jesus commanded to us, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And if y'all are in men's, in men's group, you've heard me say this quite a bit. Because this is the first lesson that God had to give me for me to really live this life. But he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. Jesus, even while hung on the cross, was ridiculed. How many know he could have took himself down off that cross? But he knew he had to step out of that comfort zone. Instead, he looked at his father and he asked for his father to forgive them because they did not know what they were doing. How many of us are praying for our enemies? Now, many of us may already know the benefits of the vine, but we struggle with moving out of our comfort zone into a place in trust with the gardener. It's because we get comfortable in the world. Amen? Sometimes the things of the world really look good. Amen? Amen? Come on. I know some people got some gold, some jewelry, and probably spent their last dime getting it. <laughs> we get comfortable in being self-sufficient, self-resilient, and we get caught up in being just plain old selfish. We were born in sin. Sin naturally preserves itself. It naturally wants to preserve self. It wants to preserve the flesh. So how do you think that the devil tricked Adam and Eve into eating the fruit from the Garden of Eden? He had them take their focus off of God and put their focus on themselves. That's why our children are natural born liars. <laughs> Amen? Amen? I can tell you, my son, who drunk the last part of Kool-Aid? It was mama. Mama don't even like Kool-Aid. <laughs> but it's because we try to preserve self. Now, the scary part is that we get comfortable in sin. Being comfortable simply means affording or enjoying contentment and security. The issue with sin is that it gives us an idea of false security. I want to be secure in my manhood, so I'm going to sleep with as many women as I can. I want to stay in this social circle, so I'm going to get a credit card and buy all these things that I really can't afford. I'm going to get on Facebook and share what my mama gave me.
because I want a little bit of attention. I want to know what I want. I want to know when I can get what I want, when I want, how I want. Another area that we can get comfortable in is fear. Some of us are comfortable living a life of fear that we try to escape the lives of others. I believe that's why Facebook and Instagram are so popular right now. I think that's why reality TV is so popular right now. Because we are living in a generation that is fearful. That they don't want to get out of the comfort zone to do the things that God is wanting them to do. And it's because the, it's because the devil has us tricked. He has this trick that we can stay where we're at. We can stay where we're at and still be saved. So instead of looking for a new job, so instead of uh, doing homework, I know we have a few teenagers here. Instead of doing those things, let's watch some reality TV. Let's watch some, some, uh, some um, uh, Re Real Housewives of Atlanta. Let's watch some Real Housewives of Orange Beach. Let's re uh, watch some Real Housewives of, of Columbia, Missouri. <laughs> Let's watch America's Got Talent. Let's watch The Voice. We substitute our dreams for others to see how they push for theirs. We even find ourselves custom making players on video games. And spending thousands of hours and some of us thousands of dollars trying to be somebody that we haven't been. We stay in fear because we know what to expect if we don't push the button. If we don't push the envelope. We allow the ceiling to be our limit instead of the sky to be our limit. Some of us only want to give 70, 80, 90, maybe 99.5%. But none of us, or some of us, don't want to give over 100%. We don't want to give the 120. We don't want to give the 130. We don't want to give the 150. The 200. But that's the reason why we're not growing. And there was a, there was a saying that I heard recently that said, if you're not growing, you're dying. And if you aren't looking to learn more, then you are content in the place that you are. When there is so much more for us to learn. The gardener, God, will not allow us to be connected to the vine if we aren't looking to grow and bear more fruit. That's why the scripture says that he will prune or cut off. I asked my mom if I could share this. <laughs> but when I was young, my mom was a gardener. Amen. House plants, she could grow them. Me and Jamie, on the other hand... We're on America's Most Wanted for uh, serial killers of plants. <laughs> but I remember what my mom would do. She would go through and examine the plant. She would examine and see what areas needed to be pruned and what areas needed to be cut off and what areas need or what plant needed to be taken apart and put planted somewhere else. So that's what God is doing for us. He's examining us. Is there areas that we need to be cut off? Do I need to cut off some TV? Do I need to cut off Facebook? Do I need to cut off Instagram? Do I need to quit Facebook stalking everybody else and get myself depressed to see what they, we think that they have? It's sometimes hard to get out of sin. It's sometimes hard to get out of our fear. But you're not alone. Even Paul himself said he had a thorn in his side. Never let us know what that thorn was. So put your thorn there. He also said that he often found himself doing the things that he shouldn't instead of doing the things that he should do. And I, I feel like, and, and if I had more time, I was planning on putting a bed up here and everything. But, but, <laughs> but uh, I was going to get comfortable, real comfortable. <laughs> but, <laughs> but each time we sin, we get a little more comfortable. It's like laying in bed. 
And do you, when you get really comfortable, you start pulling the sheets up. Get a little more comfortable. You know, man, I'm looking at pornography. I'm going to pull the comforter up now. Man, I just looked at that woman going the other way. And man, what did she have? Now I'm fluffing my pillow. And I'm getting comfortable in my sin. But how many know that God was ready for that? That's why he left us a comforter. Because he wanted us to get out of our comfort zone and get pushed past that place so the comforter can get us secure in what we need to do for him. We don't always think it. We don't always feel it. But there is benefits of discomfort. Let's take, let's take a look at Moses. Pastor Josh really uh, spoke this. I don't have to go through the, the backdrop. But look at Moses. He was very comfortable living in the palace. He could have had anything he wanted living in the palace. But for some reason, he decided to walk outside of the palace walls to see what was going on with the Hebrew people. And when he did that, Again, I'm, I'm going to put a disclaimer here. Like Andy said, I'm not saying break the law, but he did murder somebody because he got so mad about what was going on. And then the Bible says that he ran into a into the wilderness, a place that was not comfortable to him. But he found himself getting comfortable again. While he was sitting at the well, he saw some women struggling with the well. And so he helped them with that. And then the women went and told their father. Then the father said, bring him here. And then the father accepted him and gave him one of his daughters. So now Moses is getting comfortable once again. Now he's in a weird place, a strange land, but getting comfortable there. And then he got comfortable and decided to have a family. But then God pushed him out of that comfort zone once again. And he met him through a burning bush and said, hey, Moses, I know you're content right now, but I got a better work for you to do. And he said that he would take him back to Egypt to deliver his people. And like Pastor Josh said this morning, Moses tried to come up with excuses. How many of us get afraid when we come up with excuses on why we can't do it? No matter if it's for God or if it's just financially, of job, whatever. But we get scared, so we make excuses. But God gave him a plan. He gave him a rod. But he also told him that he could go back with somebody that he was used to, Aaron. And so he said that even though you have a st st stuttering problem, I'll let this guy help you with that. There was also a blind man in the midst of the crowd. While he was being told to shut up, he stepped out of his comfort zone and yelled even louder to get Jesus to heal him. And then Andy did an awesome job with about the lady that had a blood issue for 12 years. While the crowd seemed unbearable, she did what most of us are afraid to do, and that's to get down on our knees and crawl toward Jesus to get a touch from him. There was also a rich tax collector that was named Zac Zacchaeus and he was short hopefully he was shorter than me but he he ran past the crowd and climbed up a tree to get Jesus' attention he got out of his comfort zone once, he ste once we step out of our comfort zone that is when we find what we are seeking we receive what we have been asking and the doors will open where you have been knocking Many of us don't like to feel discomfort, and I can prove it tonight. How many of us work out? Okay, you see that? All right, keep those hands up. How many of us work out three times a week? All right, woo, I wasn't ready for this, Pastor. I didn't mean to do another example next time. 
How many of us? <laughs> how many of us work out five times a week? Numbers drop. And I can tell you why this man doesn't work out all the time. Because I don't like the feeling of my muscles <laughs> after I keep working out. Because that discomfort is stretching me in places that I'm not used to. And that's what God is trying to do to us tonight. He is trying to stretch us to places that we're not used to so we can get to the place that he wants us to be. Just like working out, we have to push past that discomfort. Some of us try to hide our past so no one will know where we come from or maybe even currently struggle with. But how many know that God will use that very thing to minister to many? You got to think, God turned Moses, a murderer, into a deliverer. God turned a selfish person named Samson into a selfless person by killing the enemy and taking his own life. Jesus called Peter from the boat, but then turned Peter back to the boat to preach a pulpit message that he spoke to way more than he's ever done before. Jesus turned a man named Saul, a Christian accuser, to a Christian maker. Many of us struggle in our marriages because we want to stay in our comfort zone. And I know I'm not going to get any men's in this, in this area. But many of us do not like to say I'm sorry. Because we feel a little discomfort by saying it. Some of us don't like to accept the apology. Because we like to sit in that seat called hurt. We get uncomfortable to have the hard conversations. We get uncomfortable talking about finances. We get uncomfortable talking about how we're going to raise our kids. We get uncomfortable when we don't know how to love our wives, love our husbands. Because we forgot how discomfort, how, how uncomfortable it was to date them. Amen? I can tell you. It was very uncomfortable dating Jamie. Be, you know why? Because I had something to prove. I wanted to prove to her that I deserved her love. And I got to a point in our marriage, and I'm going to be perfectly honest, very perfectly transparent, that I got comfortable in our life that I forgot how to show her I loved her. Not that I didn't love her, but how I showed her I loved her. Today, I am seeing way too many of my friends and family end in divorces. And it's because nobody in that situation wants to move out of discomfort. We don't want to say, I'm sorry. We don't want to say, I forgive you. We don't want to even meet with the marriage counselor. We have to get to the point of discomfort. Now, I didn't come tonight to preach you to a shout, obviously. Instead, I came tonight to proclaim the message of Jesus Christ so you can repent, get a renewed mind, get a changed life, and move out of that comfort zone. It's time for some of us to move away from the comfort of milk. How many of us had babies? And sometimes that milk... They crave it, right? They crave it. So when it comes to time that we want to move them into meat, whoo, <laughs> it's hard. But that's many of us as Christians today. We want to stay on the milk. But just like that, that baby, that milk will only keep you for so long. It's the meat that will keep you full and sustained. So tonight, I want you to start chewing on some meat. The devil wants us to keep on the milk because he knows that we won't be able to survive. Tonight, we are getting out of the mindset of I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm proclaiming that tonight. Ain't nobody got time for that. I wish I had that meme back here. But there's no more excuses. There's no more excuses about where my family history is. My family's a failure. My family has diabetes. My family has this. My family has that. He hurt me. She hurt me. 
They didn't shake my hand. They didn't say, they didn't know my name. It's time for us to move away from that. Because sometimes we can't move out of our place of comfort because we are still sitting in that seat called hurt. We have to get away from focusing on ourselves and focus on God. That's the one that is ready for us to reach those souls. Excuse me, those souls. It's time to take the magnifying glass off of us and put it on him. It's time for us to step out of our comfort zone.